Um, so PhysX Vehicles, uh, this is an extension library for the PhysX SDK. And it was written originally for games. Uh, the entire purpose of it was simply to simplify adding vehicles to your games. So you didn't need to have uh, an expert in uh, vehicle dynamics to be able to add um, some fun gameplay vehicles into your game and to be able to kind of introduce a new gameplay feature. Uh, however, PhysX vehicles are now actually uh, being used in part of uh, NVIDIA Drive Sim, which is our uh, self-driving uh, car training. And the questions that, that arose from that were basically, uh, would PhysX vehicles, something that was originally designed for games, actually be suitable for use in something that's a non-gaming application? And, and the real question behind that is exactly how accurate is the PhysX vehicle model? Um, so first, let's define what a PhysX vehicle is. Um, so it has an engine, uh, which is basically a 1D rigid body, which has uh, some um, either user or, or manufacturer or whatever defined uh, drive torque curves uh, and some damping um, for engine resistance. It has a drivetrain, um, so the usual things you'd expect, clutch, gearbox, all that type of stuff. And it has a suspension system using spring dampers um, with wheels that are connected, which are 1D rigid bodies. They can only rotate around the degree of freedom. And the tire model has uh, longitudinal and lateral slip angles, for slip forces, uh, it has non-linear response and, uh, and friction with the, with the ground or surfaces that it's driving on. Uh, and then in addition to that is the 3D rigid body, which is the chassis of the car. And with that, you can join other things to it, like sidecars, trailers, using physics joints and physics rigid bodies. Uh, and then all your collision detection, integration, everything. So that portion of the simulation, uh, it uses physics rigid body dynamics. Um, effectively, what boils down to is a number of forces and torques that are applied through the, through the uh, rigid body to make it behave like a vehicle. Um, so for validation, um, so as we discussed before, um, the articulations were heavily validated internally and externally. So as soon as you want to use physics for something uh, that isn't a game or visual effects, it doesn't. It, the goal of it isn't to look good, but it's to actually be somewhat accurate. Uh, you have to validate that model somehow. Um, so we were lucky enough to have uh, received a ground truth data set provided by a self-driving car team, and from that. Uh, we set about trying to configure the vehicle data so that it could closely match the reference vehicle. Um, and once we've done that, then uh, we've made attempts to compare the simulation results. Um, now, the example cases that we would uh, test in at the moment are fairly limited and fairly simple, but they're things that we could, uh, we could, we had available from our guarantee truth and we were able to compare. So uh, we feel that these were representative of uh, what someone might do in uh, relatively safe driving behaviors. So things like testing acceleration, testing braking, taking, testing basic things like lane changing. So this is the type of thing that like a level two self-driving vehicle might need to do. Um, so the test methodology, uh, we took driving input, steering values, so the values of the steering, uh, the brake values and throttle values, and they were updated at 75 hertz because that's what we had. Uh, our simulation was at was at one kilohertz, so thousand hertz. Uh, that was to try and promote as high a quality as we could possibly get. Make sure there was very little uh, integration error in there. And then um, this one's a bit fuzzy. Uh, we attempted to drive on the same road geometry with the same <laughs> friction properties. Uh, it's pretty hard to compare that with reality, but uh, we did our best. Uh, and then we sampled the simulation state, so wheel rolling speed, vehicle speed at real-time frequencies. In this case, it was at 60 hertz, which was how fast our, our simulator was ticking um, for the actual rendering side anyway. Uh, and then we plot the trajectories and the maneuvers. So uh, the first one we've got is throttling and braking. So we rev the engine, we engage the clutch, and we accelerate to the top speed that the first gear can possibly have. And then at 30 seconds, we apply the brakes. So the green line is PhysX, and the blue line is our reference model. And as you can see, the PhysX actually matches it very closely for about the first seven seconds. And then once it gets past that little hump in the torque curve, it, go, it accelerates slightly faster than the reference. But it's very, very close. If you're looking at the numbers, which are centimeters per second, you're seeing that we're, we're extremely close. Then when we slammed on the brake, the braking behavior is almost exactly the same. Um, so the top graph is the vehicle speed and the bottom graph is the wheel rolling speed, which are obviously very closely related. Uh, and then we looked at the lane change maneuver. So again, the 
game here, the well, what we did here was uh, rev the engine and glide the clutch, throttle forwards. Uh, we began a lane change maneuver at 10 seconds uh, and we finished it at 16 seconds. So what we've got is we've got, again, the wheel rolling speed graph there. So again, um, in the run-up to, to the lane change maneuver, uh, the velocity is fairly similar. It diverges again at about our seven, eight seconds, which was where we, where we noticed before. Uh, and then when we do the steering, uh, we can see that um, we both end up in the same lane um, we're roughly parallel to each other, but it's not quite in exactly the same position. And again, that's because of this small divergence here. Um, but it's pretty close. It's impressively close. Um, so limitations, okay. Uh, well, the first obvious one is uh, that's only two cases and they seem pretty easy. Um, but, but it does actually match those cases uh, pretty well in those described uh, conditions. Uh, we, we, are pretty convinced that this wouldn't extend to all maneuvers. Um, there are obviously simplifications to the drive model, tire model, and things like that. And when you drive in a more extreme measure, which would be cases where, for example, the tires might might slip if you're taking you know hard steering and things like that, slamming brakes on, then at those points um, the models are likely to diverge. But in cases of relatively safe driving. Um, the models might be reasonably similar. Uh, you can see that there's some divergence, um, but in reality, if you're steering and then steering again to move into lanes, um, nobody does it by steering, holding it for four seconds, then steering back and, and correcting. You, you, it, it's a feedback loop. Um, the other restriction on this is it assumes perfect driving conditions. We have no notion of, of weather, of, um, of you know, moisture on the road or anything like that. And that would require a significant amount of investment or effort to try and approximate that in some way. Uh, but it's an interesting set of results, at least. Um, 